Hello, it's James. I have this aluminum spinner mounted to my OS91 four-stroke. And this spinner was made by Gene Barton, and it is intended to go on a Funero RC Albatross D2 kit, which I have partially constructed and put away in the closet. I bought this uh, aluminum spinner from Gene Barton a few years ago, and I let it sit in the bag and was hesitant to work on it because I didn't want to damage it. In this video, I want to explain the process and the steps I followed to cut out the prop doors and to uh, drill the holes for the mounting screws. This is an area of the hobby that I have no experience with until now, and so I was very hesitant to get started on it. So I'm going to take it off the engine, and then I'm going to explain the thought processes I went through to get this job done. When I received the spinner, uh, this cone was perfectly shaped, uh, no prop doors cut out on it, no holes drilled in it, and the back plate uh, was also had, had no mounting holes in it already. It was just solid except for the center hole. And uh, I knew that somehow I had to take a 15-6 prop like this one and get this curve transferred over to the, the cone on both sides and cut it out. So this is the process I went through. First step I did was to just work with the back plate and take my prop. You'll see I've already, this one's been cut up already. And a pencil works great for just going through the center hole and into the back plate to center the prop. And that way, I could mark the propeller where it would be passing the back plate. In other words, where it would be exiting the cone. And I, I sawed it off right there. So that tells me that this is the cross section I'm interested in transferring to the cone. The next thing I did was I took this prop that I've cut up and I laid it on the kitchen counter and I simply took a uh, pad of post-it notes and butted up against it like this. Took a pencil and I drew the curve and marked the width and then drew two straight lines going down and it ended up like that. Now, um, that tells me the shape of the prop and the width when it's on the uh, surface. So I know the prop's going to be sitting on this back plate, and the back plate happens to be about eight millimeters thick. And the cone goes all the way down, almost to the edge of the back of the back plate. So I know that this shape needed to be raised up about eight millimeters <laughs> to, uh, to cover that. Now I pondered this for quite a while. How do I get this shape onto the spinner because I know if I make a copy of this and I cut it out and I try and tape it down it's going to be curved this way and it's going to be curving back this way it's just going to be wrinkled it's going to be a mess and there's no way I could really do it accurately and really I thought about this quite a while light bulb went off I happen to have a, a stick of balsa that's like a one by two which was just tall enough to cover this with the extra eight millimeters and what I did was I, I took this shape and I, I made a copy of it on my printer. Then I, I cut it out and I glued it to the end of the wood with the extra eight millimeters below. And I made this piece with this piece of paper glued to the end. I was able to saw it out and make it exactly that shape. Okay, so now what I ended up with was a piece of wood that's flat on the end, and I need to somehow transfer this shape to the cone. So what I did was I took some self-adhesive sandpaper and I cut it into thin strips, maybe about eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch wide, and I, I placed the strips on the cone and just lined them up and covered it maybe an inch and a half high. Then I took my balsa wood and I just put it on the counter and I rubbed back and forth against the sandpaper, it was this side, which gave me this curve. 
It's curved in two directions and it mates perfectly with the cone of the spinner. After that I had removed all of the sandpaper from the spinner and I put a lot of uh, masking tape on so that I could uh, mark it up. And then it was simply a matter of marking both sides very precisely, taking my, my new tool here, mating it to the cone in the right position and then just drawing a line right around the edge of it onto the uh, masking tape. And that gave me my prop doors clearly marked on both sides. Now also, one thing I want to point out is trying to get them exactly opposed from the center section. I printed this in Microsoft Word. You simply use the uh, shape tool and uh, draw a circle and make it four and three quarter inches tall and four and three quarter inches wide. And then I also used the shape tool to draw a box around it. And then I was able to just to take it off, uh, print it out and uh, lay it on the counter and just mark uh, the center by going through the corners and then marking either side of the center line a little bit. And then I knew that uh, when I placed the uh, spinner cone on here, a little difficult to see there, when I placed the spinner cone on this printout, I could easily mark the exit points for each side of the prop. So having the prop doors clearly marked on here, I actually used my bandsaw to cut the uh, straight sides and, and cut into it quite a bit. Then I used a Dremel tool to get it closer to the line and finally I have some small metal files and I spent a lot of time just rubbing with the file trying to get it close to the line. And once I was satisfied with it, pull off the masking tape and it's, and it's done. Now the next uh, challenge was to mark and drill these holes for the mounting screws. Uh, the spinner included a little bag with eight of these 440 by quarter inch, I think they are machine screws. I needed to precisely mark the, uh, the holes for those. I used a similar trick to marking the prop doors in that I went in Microsoft Word, I printed another page with a circle. This time I printed an octagon around it and I was able to then draw from opposing points and I'd have my eight points where the screw mounting holes would go. So then with the spinner cone covered with masking tape around the edge, I simply laid it on this template, making sure the prop doors were evenly spaced on either side. Something like uh, this. <laughs> Something like that. Evenly spaced between these lines. And then on the masking tape, I simply marked where each line came out. And I had it, I had the eight holes evenly spaced, very accurately marked. The final step was to drill the holes for the mounting screws. And because the edge of this back plate is not perpendicular, it's angled slightly. I knew that uh, I didn't want to drill straight down into it, but I wanted it to be angled slightly so that uh, I'd be drilling perpendicular to this, this edge angle. And to accomplish that, I made this little jig, if you will, just out of some scrap plywood I had in the garage. And I just estimated this angle that's here, made uh, two identical pieces uh, spaced apart here so that you could take this back plate and clamp it down against the edges of that jig. And then this is horizontal. My drill press then could drill straight down into it. And I just rotate. Well, you actually have to have the cone on when you do it. So, because uh, it's where the cone is where the uh, the uh, hole points were marked. And you just hold this against the jig, line up your point, and let the drill press come straight down in through the cone, through the back plate, rotate over and do the next one. And that worked really well. Now the final step would seem very simple, 
you have your screw holes drilled in both the cone and the back plate, and you have to tap the back plate to accept the 440 screws. And as it seemed like I was coming down the home stretch there, I got pretty excited about it and started to tap away. I got the first hole tapped and I put a screw in. Everything was good. And I went to the opposite side and I started to tap the second hole. And I think uh, in my excitement, I got a little aggressive and I actually snapped the tap. I actually broke the tap off inside the hole and it broke fairly flush with the edge of the back plate, which means there was no getting it out. It was in there for good. As a matter of fact, um, if I find it here, the broken piece of tap is still in here. The point is sticking out right here, and you can see where it, it broke off just about even with the edge here. I took my Dremel tool and ground it down to make it smooth, but there, I tried and tried to get it out, and I could not get it out. So. At first I thought I've ruined everything. <laughs> so I took a few deep breaths and I evaluated the situation. And uh, what I decided to do was to put the cone back on and rotate it away from the holes that I had already drilled in the back plate. And I just went in equal spacing. I taped the cone back onto the back plate in the new position. I got my jig out and I went back out to the drill press and I drilled all new holes. So instead of the eight original holes, the back plate now has 16. <laughs> I was trying to find another 440 tap and drill set and they're uh, not stocked in most hardware stores. They're hard to find. I ordered a couple sets from Tower Hobbies and I had opened this one and I went very, very slowly to tap each hole. I also used some WD-40 to uh, keep everything lubricated. I'd spray into the hole. I would run the tap if just a couple of turns, when it start to dig, I'd give it a little more, then I'd back it out. I had compressed air, I blew any debris out of the hole, I sprayed some more WD-40 in, and I went over and over. It took me about an hour to tap these eight holes, but I did not want that tap to break in there again. And I was so thrilled when I had all eight holes tapped <laughs> with, uh, with no problems. And then I was able to put the cone on and put each of the eight screws in and then mount it to the engine. We've had it on that uh, engine and on that test stand and I've run it out in the backyard and it uh, everything's good. Now this spinner, not quite finished. I've, I've scratched it up a little bit uh, working on it. Uh, so I'm going to polish it up, buff it up some. It's also going to be painted before it goes on the model. So um, Another thing you might want to do because it's it's just a disc and a cone, and you need to make sure you mark where the holes were when you drilled them. So uh, it, in theory, you know, because they were evenly spaced, I should be able to rotate it over to the next one and have everything line up, but I wouldn't count on that. So what I did was I uh, scratched in a little mark here, a V pointing at that hole, and on the inside of the cone I have a little scratch mark pointing at that hole, and I know that those go together. If they go together, all the others will line up. So that's the process I used to uh, cut out the prop doors and uh, drill the mounting holes on this spinner. Um, I'm sure I'll get some suggestions on better ways to do it. It was uh, something I've never done before and I just came up with my own solution. Uh, hopefully it'll help somebody, but uh, like I say, if you've got a better method, please share it with us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.